you know, one of the the key components, um, and and you touched on on some of it, right? Um, as far as the, the the migrations, especially when it's from one Office 365 tenant into to a parent tenant, the acquirer tenant, right, or the wh whichever they deem to be the master tenant, and the one that they would like to proceed together as a as a you know a combined business with, you know, we look at the the um, you know the requirements from from both both organizations where you might have um, compliance issues, regulatory issues, or specific security requirements, and you make sure that you know the 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 requirements from both organizations are considered so that the 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 end tenant is is in a state that that maintains the compliance and security for for both organizations as as necessary to to maintain compliance and 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 ultimately to to ease the transition um, by looking at at those requirements early on in the game. And it really does take on a, a feel of, of, of the old days where it's a, like a waterfall heavy, heavy analysis in the beginning with lots of different stakeholders to make sure that everything is identified because the, you know, we migrate Office 365 content and, and you know, and, and merge these tenants all the time. That's not where the complexities really lie. I mean, it might be, but but really the the complexities lie in identifying and and managing the integrations that both organizations are using that might be one offs. And it really um, highlights the, the the requirement to perform comprehensive analysis that might not be within you know a, a typical organization strong suits because it might be a one-off application, it might be a homegrown application, and it's critical to understand what these integration points are so that you don't inhibit the customer's ability to do business after the the you know the cutover dates and and the migrations start. The the key there is making sure that you identified those pitfalls for training the users that may not be familiar with you know. Mm -hmm. um, these new, more strict requirements, and um, and that you know where where one you know touch point has less strict, that you know you you don't um, you know you don't impact their ability to do business when you tighten that down. So it is standardization, and you have one standard by which you need to train the users, but you may only have you know two out of three. Let's just say we're merging three companies. Only two out of three of them are going to have to be trained on that one component, but they're also going to need to be trained on that before you move their data and instill these requirements on their, their ability to do their work. Does that make sense, Jim? I love it, and I think you also ought to drill a little bit on identity as being one of the key factors of these mergers and acquisitions. Because again, yep. you have 500 people in this company, 500 in that company, and 1,000 in that company, three different directories. You want to move them into one. So everybody has one identity in the new company or in the, the single company. Um, and then that that's what I heard a lot in the past of, oh, I don't want to have multiple usernames and passwords because some, sometimes when you acquire a company, that's what they do. Is they say, all right, here, log into company A by using this and then log into company B using this and it becomes a nightmare for them to do that work. Yeah, and that's and that's a. Uh... Those band-aid approaches, those those stopgap approaches, are are things that we work hard. That's why we try to front load the analysis, so we don't put a a temporary fix in place that has to be undone and retrained, you know, after the the uh, uh, you know a next phase of the project. Right. But I think that when you get into talking about the complexities around identity, um, I think that maybe AJ can speak a little bit more eloquently about about those and some of the experiences we've had, because you might not just be talking about, you know, different, different active directory, you know, identity management components, but you might have different platforms. You might have yeah. Oct that's either going away or being rolled out to, to the rest of the organization, or you may be handling things entirely different in a, in a G suite implementation. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Coming from even disparate systems, we've had companies from G suite, and from Lotus Notes move into Office 365, right? So yeah, it's, it's it's not just all exchange to Microsoft 365. It's these other companies moving in too. You, you never know what they're using when you acquire them. <laughs> uh, one more thing I want to add too is uh, we've always talked about 
synergies with mergers and acquisitions in terms of people and their roles, but also the technology. So if, if two companies merge and they both have subscriptions, maybe one of them can be canceled, right? So looking for things that overlap technology-wise where you can offset some costs and utilize the synergy. Yeah, like like you guys had mentioned on the identity side, whenever we're we're dealing with a, a merger acquisition, which you know, in some cases those those two are really disparate things, right? An acquisition is not necessarily always the same scenario politically within the companies or you know, within the business itself as as just a true merger where two companies are kind of coming together trying to build that synergy between the two. Um, in some cases, an acquisition truly is, you know, one company acquiring another saying you need to come in and, and be on our standards. Um, in, in which case, there there could be scenarios where, you know, we've seen both companies are, are coming from Okta, and that would seem to be a, a relatively simple uh, transformation to occur because both companies are, are uh, authenticating through Okta at the time. But it's not necessarily always a, you know, a one for one. Um, a, a lot of configuration differences uh, the way that attributes are handled um, in, in the databases and all that can can shift from company to company. And, you know, even if we're talking about everything being standardized on Microsoft, um, some of the most complex environments we've seen and had to deal with are coming from two companies kind of coming together with um, different on-prem uh, AD environments that are both currently synced to an O365 environment. So all of that kind of harkens back to the original topic that we were talking about, you know, and that the complexity doesn't really exist in, in moving the data. We can move mail in a matter of days. We can move OneDrive content, SharePoint content in a matter of days in, in most cases. Um, but the planning and, and uh, effort that goes into designing the architecture that everything is going to land on is is really where the bulk of that work lies um, because of all those those complexities and intricacies. <laughs> Isn't um, it true that one of our biggest projects with mergers and acquisitions, the team was mostly made up of project coordinators instead of technical engineers, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I, th I believe I know which, which client you're referring to. And on those calls, you know, we'll regularly have 9, 10, 11 people because it is an extremely large uh, acquisition effort. And of those, you know, 9 or 10 folks who are on the call, we might have 2 to 3 of them who are, are truly engineers and architects. And the rest are made up of a series of either business decision makers, um, project coordinators, or project managers who are there to, you know, document and keep an eye on all the different things that that are going to impact the business. Because at the end of the day, the number one thing that these companies are concerned about is is really what is the end user going to have to go through. These people have to, you know, function on a day to day basis, and they have to get their jobs done. So we're trying to plan everything out in a really really cohesive and efficient way, so that when we actually pull the trigger and start moving things. Uh, the impact is as minimal as possible, and um, you know people are essentially able to get back right back to work. I think the one area to to consider there is, in some cases, folks you know come together and and they have multiple different companies with multiple different tenants or or business solutions, and maybe don't know or don't realize that a a you know uh, a merger into a single O365 environment would benefit or fix some of the pain points they have in their business. For instance, we had a client um, this year who came to us asking for a way to interconnect three different Office 365 tenants because they were having a lot of problems um, sharing data in SharePoint and Teams and constantly having to, you know, log out of one tenant and into another to be able to chat and um, and you know collaborate inside of its team on a, on a file or look at a, a thread in a in a channel somewhere. Um, and you know, we kind of mentioned to them. We can help train your staff on the, on the best way to do that and make it easy and and uh, as quick and efficient as possible. But ultimately, you know, the solution to that would be if if you consolidated everybody, um, you know, you can put them into a single tenant and everybody can have access to everything in a very seamless manner. And their primary concern uh, with that particular project was, well, we don't we have three completely different companies. We don't want them to be the same company. We're not all going to go under one umbrella and change our names. We need to to you know keep our individual identities and and we explain to them you can ab absolutely have separate identities with an O365. Everybody can have their own domain for their company, their own Teams and SharePoint sites for their company. They can keep mail separate. Um, you know, there's all all kinds of things you can do to maintain that that virtual separation between the companies. Yeah, they call them while also they call them invisible firewalls. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> so. Yeah, but you know, but doing that combination and building those those uh, you know invisible firewalls in 
allows them to stay separate but still have the ease of use of of these collaboration tools that everybody's everybody's really switching to these days that's a really good point because that is the question i keep hearing and there's a naivety around well it, i need to keep these three companies separate and you can do that logically within a single tenant and you, we know how to do that you have the different domains and the different logins and the different emails like aj was saying I was going to mention that um, one of the interesting things that, uh, you know, we've we've found is, you know, the the customers that that do this frequently do it often. There are companies with with business models where they do focus on mergers and acquisitions, either acquiring mark, acquiring market share or just, you know, adding smaller businesses of the same nature to, to their shell and, um, you know, building their business that way. Or, um, you know, and then the, the one offs are are, you know, they're they're just as important. But, you know, it's interesting that when we get in there, you know, once we've done the first one and, um, you know, or or even the first several, you know, the 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 knowledge of the 2B environment is 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 well and truly understood. And we, um, you know, we, we become a really valuable member of the team. Because we've worked so closely with them on on that first one, that it, it's only logical to come back to us for the next ones, and we we really do end up, you know, becoming just a part of their IT department, part of their business systems analysis group, and um, you know, building a, a very strong relationship. So typically, when we when we, you know, have begun a lot of these merger and acquisition projects, um, we tend to meet with the project management team and and usually one to two lead architects on the topics that we know are going to be involved. So when we first meet with a client, you know, it will come out just in the pre-sales discussions or or during the initial discovery call or kickoff call, you know, which key technologies we're working with. Maybe they've come in and, and they're it's bare bones, right? We need to do a, a full G suite to O365 migration and they haven't even started. We need to spin up a new tenant. So we kind of know what skill sets we need to bring to the table. In other cases, um, like one that we were talking to this week, um, actually, uh, somebody has already begun that deployment. They have a tenant and they've begun, you know, spinning up mailboxes for the users. But, um, you know, they need that full mail migration to be complete. And then they have a SharePoint uh, component that they need migrated in. So we know we're going to need an Exchange Pro and a, and a SharePoint Pro. So our, our practice is really broken down into, you know, a series of um, specialists who are either identity specialists, uh, security specialists, mail and exchange specialists, SharePoint and Teams collaboration specialists. Um, so depending on the skill sets that we need, we'll bring those those folks to the table at the beginning. Um, and then as we go through the project, if we discover that there's a, a need to to kind of get a little bit deeper into the weeds on some of the other technologies, we have the ability to to shift that around and bring in some other SMEs to, to help out. Um, but, you know, these are, are definitely collaborative efforts um, with most of these mergers and acquisitions. Uh, especially companies of the size that we tend to deal with, um, most folks have their own IT teams and their own um, group who are, uh, you know, managing a lot of the the technology in the source and or the destination. And when that's the case, we're coming in really as as the consultants more so than you know a staff org type of resource. So we're meeting with the team and we're sort of you know co-planning what are we going to be doing over the next few weeks, over the next couple of months, to get this project over the finish line. And throughout that process, we're determining together, you know, which pieces can we take on individually and which pieces does, does the client want to take on um, in order to, you know, number one, it's it's important for them to be able to take some things on because they're ultimately going to be the ones who are maintaining and managing this environment moving forward once it's done. So the more work they can do, um, you know, alongside us, the better they're going to understand what's been done and why so they can maintain it going forward. Um, but then also, uh, you know, it's it's a way that the clients tend to manage the budgets um, with the way that we we kind of come in with with the uh, T and M approach. And you know, if they want to make sure that they're leaning on us for the things they really need us for, but they want to take some things on in house, uh, it helps them keep the cost down, and we do things really effectively that way. I want to also just stress again that these types of engagements are extremely complex and should be handled only under the care of professionals this is not easy this is complicated it takes experience to do it right and that's what we've got and that's kind of the hope is that we attract companies 
who are going through mergers and acquisitions and they say, I don't know how to do this. This is my first rodeo. I need help. And then they do a search. They find us. They go, oof. You know, pretty much anybody who's using O365 is going to have a subset of their productivity suite products that have been deployed but they're going to vary from company to company. So if you get a company that's only using Exchange and they're not using Teams, OneDrive, or SharePoint, and they just have Exchange licenses, um, they're only going to need the the, the mail migration piece, um, in which case that's a relatively straightforward um, migration. The, the main complexity there is, you know, how deep are the groups? Do they have dynamic groups? Things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, the key deliverable is that all identities, all identity related objects such as groups and all mail is is moved from one tenant to the other. And that's that's going to be a, a pretty standard deliverable across any tenant to tenant migration. But um, from there, it can be a, a complete sprawl just dependent on on company to company. So and as a for instance, right, um, we mentioned earlier a client that we had that was merging three companies into one. And that project took us probably about 150 hours. Um, and we have another another acquisition that is one company that acquired one other company. And I, I would expect that to be well over seven, 800 hours by the time we're done. And the key component is size and complexity. And, and when I say complexity, I mean the number of products they're using and then how they've deployed those products. So if somebody uses SharePoint, they may only be using it for file storage, in which case it's very straightforward. Just move the files and call it good. But SharePoint can also be, you know, uh, basically an entire ERP system that's been, you know, meticulously built out piece by piece using workflows and automations and, and integrations with Power Automate, Power BI um, and things like that. And if we need to move those, some of that can't even be migrated. It needs to be manually recreated because there just is no migration path for some of those products. So you know as much as i would love to say yes there's there are some key deliverables that are the same everywhere ultimately it's it's always going to depend on on what has the company deployed how have they deployed it and then where are they moving it from um and and where are they moving it to so um it, it really is varied especially the tenant to tenant migrations and the the mergers and acquisitions probably more than anything else that we do is is a very um it can vary greatly from simplicity to complexity probably more than any other project type yeah ultimately our um i mean every every merger and acquisition is going to include business productivity right no matter what platform somebody's coming from or going to everybody is just looking for business productivity what do i do with my mail what do i do with my files what do i do with my identity what do i do with my devices um, there's different pieces that go into it. So whether they're coming from Google and Okta into O365 and Azure or coming tenant to tenant, it's always going to include mail. It's always going to include files. It's always going to include collaboration. It's always going to include meetings. It's always going to include security and usually is going to include some type of device management and oversight. 